If your business struggles to get all the photos and files you need in the right place at the right time, then this video is for you. We're going to be going into detail about building an automated system around this very thing. We're going to create folders, we're going to create subfolders, and then we're going to update our database with the information uh, when a new file is added to those folders. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help our clients save thousands of hours every year by building automated procedures to work in the back end. Now in this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be using a solution using a few different softwares to create new folders and also update with uh, when new files are added to those folders. So with that being said, let's just jump into my screen here. And the first thing you'll notice is that I have three different things here open at the top. I have uh, Airtable on the far left. In the middle here, I've got a Google Drive being shared. And then on the far right, I have my Zapier. Now, Zapier, if you're unfamiliar with it, is a tool that's going to communicate between our different apps in the cloud. So specifically, we're going to be using Airtable and uh, a Google, uh, Google Drive here. And we're getting them to talk to each other with the power of Zapier. So first, let's jump into our Airtable and take a look at how we can set this up. So we have three different levels or layers to this part of a database. So you have your project, and your project is connected to tasks, right? So every project probably has multiple tasks. Uh, now, this kind of an example can be used anywhere from a nonprofit to a service-based business. Uh, but for the example of this, I'm imagining that maybe you have a service-based business and every project is going to require before and after photos. So let's just go ahead and first of all, we'll create a new project. This will be project uh, DEF. And the first part of our automation procedure is we're going to create this project parent folder. So let's run this automation and I'll go into just uh, exactly how we built this in just a moment. But really what this is doing is creating a new folder for this project inside of Google Drive. So let's jump back over here and we see that now that the project's been created and the automation ran, we now have a Google folder created for it in Google Drive. And the URL is put back in our Airtable database. So we can click, we can click on this URL and it's gonna take us directly to this particular uh, Google Drive. Let's go ahead and just do that here and I'll close out my old Google Drive. And you see where this takes me to is inside of the folder My Clients, then I have now Project DEF. Now, if I were to drop back a level, uh, you'll see that uh, we've got two folders in here. And this is, of course, the example image that we're going to be using uh, for the testing purposes. All right. So but now we have that new folder and we can you know, drill back in there. But we don't have any subfolders and we don't have any files. All we've done is created that folder at this level. Now, the next step of this is when we start adding tasks to the project. And so let's imagine, first I'm going to do a grouping by project here. And I'm going to create a new project, or rather a new task that's created to project DEF. And we're going to do a before, and we're going to do an after photos. Now we have a second automation. Now this automation is going to create our child folders. So let's jump back into our Airtable database and see what's happening. See, we're adding new subfolders here. And if I were to click on one of these subfolders, it will take me again to Google Drive. And now it's looped, or rather it's a subfolder inside of the project. So again, if I were to drop back into the high level here, I've got my projects here. Drilling into that, I've got my different project tasks. And I now have folders for both before and after photos. Of course, again, nothing's inside of them. Now, the third part of this automation is that when uh, folks in the field have uploaded images to these uh, folders, we need to know at our database level when those changes were made. So we've built a third and final automation to track just that. So again, I'm going to drop into before folders here, or before photos. I'm going to just drag in uh, a, an image that I use here. Once that gets uploaded, I'm going to drop into Zapier, and I'm going to run the third and final automation. And what this is doing is it's going to look for a new, uh, a new image added to any of the folders. And when it finds one, it will then update that information here on our third and final table inside of Airtable. 
This is our third layer, and this is connected to the tasks. So this is saying, hey, you know, back here, we just had a new um, file that was uploaded. We can track here, as you can see, we can track who uploaded the folder or the file. We can see what project uh, file it was in, what the task, in this case, it was a before photos was, and, uh, and when that occurred, uh, all the way down to the time. Now, of course, this time is actually uh, slightly messed up because it's using Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, so we would need to fix that uh, if this were something we were using inside our business. But for the sake of this, you know, you can see that the time is getting pulled in as well. Of course, screen which mean time uh, being that I'm in uh, Colorado, I'm minus six hours from that. So my actual time as of this recording is 2.12 and uh, this upload says 8.11. So hence the disparity there. So we need to perform a little bit of logic on that formula. This isn't perfectly clean, but the basic, uh, you know, basics of this automation are in play. So let's take a look at the automations and see how they interact with one another. Now, I should, I should mention before we get into this that I am using uh, Google Drive because that's what we use internally here, but it's, this is possible with, with many different file uh, sharing programs. So if you were using Box, Dropbox, I imagine, I haven't built it with every single one, but uh, I have done it with several and I uh, suspect that it's more than possible with pretty much any cloud uh, you know, file sharing um, software that's out there on the market. So let's jump into Zapier and, and take a look at you know, what these different automations look like. We'll start with the parent or project folder automation. So the first step here is that we're looking for a new record. Uh, we're looking specifically for a new record in our project table. That's an important distinction. So inside our project table, when there's a new project, that's what fires the automation. Okay, so that's step one. And then step two is where we are going to create a folder inside of Google Drive. You see, we have a lot of different options when it comes to these uh, file sharing programs. For Google Drive, um, I'm selecting Create Folder. So there's something very similar uh, depending on if you're using a different software. Now from that, uh, you will also then want to uh, you know, pick the master drive. And so in many cases, you'll have you know, a number of different um, you know, folders in here that you can go and pick from, or in case in the case where you leave it blank, uh, it'll just default to the highest level. And then inside of that, what I wanna do is assign some sort of project name. In this case, I'm giving it project ABC, right? This is what I'm pulling in from the project that it finds inside of the trigger element. And then lastly, we're gonna be updating that record with, so you know, in the second step, we create that folder. In the third step, what we're doing is going back into this, we're finding the record. Again, this is the record from step one. We're finding that and we're giving it the folder name. Okay, this is, this is how we get that URL in here for us to click on and, uh, and access in the field. All right, so that's, that's the first automation in, uh, you know, in brief. So the second one that we're gonna take a look at is our child or task folder creation. And this is very similar to the parent project folder, so I'm not gonna go in the same level of detail. However, I will say that there is an important step here when we create the folder, and that is we need to know who the parent folder is so that we can create a subfolder that, you know, kind of branches into it, right? And so the way we get away with this is as follows. At the task level, we bring in uh, this parent folder lookup. And so we're looking up the ID that is associated with the parent folder. That way, when we trigger on a new task that's created and linked to a project, we automatically know what that parent folder is. And so when we run the automation, let's drop back in here, when we go to create the folder in the edit step, we can tell it we know what the parent folder ID is. Now, this uh, might be a little tricky if this is your first time using this. So just figure out how your particular software is communicating that parent ID, and then you can just plug it in here once you have access to it in your database. So from here, once we have that, then we create the subfolder underneath that. And very similarly to the first automation, once that's done, then we are also going to go back and post the URL for that folder inside of uh, our database so that we can access it with just a click of the, bu uh, click of the mouse. Okay, third and final automation here is the photo upload. And what we're doing here is this is actually a bit longer of an automation. Uh, what, we're, what we're triggering off of is a new file added into our 
um, into our folders. And so when there's a new file that appears in any of the um, folders that are in this bucket, then this is going to trigger. And then we need to do a little bit of a format. So inside of here, if we're looking at this chunk of text, this inside of this text is where we have access to the folder ID, but it's only this first chunk of text right here. It's this ID colon and then whatever follows it. Once we get to is root, this is some more data that we don't need for this particular function. So in this format or step, what we're going to do is strip out all of the superfluous data and just keep that ID. So what we're doing is what's called a separator, and I'm looking for that second step, which is is root. And uh, once it finds that, it's going to automatically return everything that happens before that. And then, so if you look at this formatter, what we're getting is just something that looks like this, ID, colon, and then the ID. So if I were to drop back into Airtable, again, I realize this is just an extra step, but it's assuring that we find the right record. Uh, so inside of here, inside of the task, we have a subfolder ID. And what we're doing here is a little bit of logic that is bringing and it's looking at the folder name and it's able to extrapolate just that end tag. And from that, it is outputting the same ID as what we have in our uh, Zapier formatter. So effectively, we've created or formatted the ID inside of Zapier, and that's what came from Google Drive. And then in Airtable, we were able to format uh, using a formula the same thing, and now they match identically, and we can uh, do a find record on this ID. All right, so that is where we go into our third step, where we're performing a find on that ID. And so that looks at, like as follows. We're looking at the task table. We're looking at the subfolder ID. That is this ID that we, that we uh, built a formula around. And then we're comparing that to the ID that we formatted in step two of this automation. And once Zapier finds a match, it knows where this record belongs. So now we have the task record that's associated with this step. And then the third and final step is we create a new record in the photo uploads part. So inside of photo uploads, we're going to go into the uh, uh, photo uploads table here, and then we create a new task, uh, or rather a new record that is linked to this task that we pulled in step three. This is the record ID that we found for the task. So again, let me pause here, go back to our Airtable setup, and in the photo uploads, what we're doing is effectively linking to the task that we found in step three. So in this case, when we ran this automation last, we found the task was project DEF before photos, and now we can link to that. All right, and then the last part of this, of course, is the roll up here. So after all the automations run, we could effectively have multiple things uploaded to the same uh, file, but we wanna know what the most recent upload was or the most recent file update was. And so for that, we use the roll up field. We're looking at the uploads and we're bringing back only the max date and time. And so in here, in here, you'll notice that the GMT is working just fine. Uh, the Greenwich Mean Time, we'll need to go ahead and fix that for the photo uploads. But otherwise, this thing is humming along just perfectly. And, uh, and this is the system that you could build to automate that creation of files for your business. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.